This is religious symbolism and it is one of the major signs of the last day that the sun would rise from the west. An upside down world. A world which is no longer functioning in accordance with fitra. That mankind no longer recognizes Allah in charge. Shaitan has taken over. And as Shaitan takes over, he delivers an upside down world. That is another lecture. And then there are the three sinkings of the earth, one in the east, one in the west, and one in... Is it Taman City, UK? <laughs> that was a few years ago, eh? One in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. And number ten, a fire will come out of Yemen and drive people to the place of assembly. Oh no, this is not a literal, literal fire. The word fire here is symbolic. It's a revolutionary fire. Hmm? Here are examples of religious symbolism in the signs of the last day. But the subject is even greater than that. Sometimes the verses of the Quran cannot be understood until a particular moment in time arrives. And when that moment in time arrives, Allah gives to His servants the nur with which to be able to understand what He's saying in that verse of the Quran. Let us give you two examples. And I'm so happy we have Sheikh Saleh in the gathering here tonight doing his PhD from Naida. Allah speaks in the Quran of a town. He knows the subject very well, Sheikh Saleh. A town. And he says that he destroyed the town. You heard me lecturing on this subject six years ago, right here. And when he destroyed the town, he expelled the people of the town. And having expelled them, he placed a ban on them. They can never return. And they know it. Ask them and they'll tell you. The Lord has prohibited us. We cannot return to this town. Hatta Iza futi hadya juj wa juj. They can never return to the town to reclaim it as their own until Gog and Magog are released. Ya juj and ma juj. And not only are they released, but they spread out in all directions. And therefore they take control of the world. The land, the sea, the air, and they establish the world order of Gog and Magog. When that world order of Gog and Magog is established, then you will see these people being brought back to that town. This is a sign in the Quran of the last age. This is a monumental sign, as big as a billboard, that you are now living in the last age. You are now living in that age when Gog and Magog control the world. His Buddha really better study the subject. Which town is it? If you look in the books of Tafsir, you will not get the answer. No. It is only when the people were being brought back to the town and it was actually happening, only then did we be, were we able to recognize the town to be Jerusalem. Hmm? It is internal, intuitive, spiritual insight which allows us to take this sign in the Quran that when you see the Jews being brought back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own, two thousand years after Allah had expelled them and banned their return, then that is the sign that Gog and Magog now control the world. 
you living in the world order of Gog and Magog. That is a very, very, very important matter. And yet, you cannot recognize that town to be Jerusalem until a moment in time comes and until you can apply no spiritual insight to it. Now let me give you another example which is even more startling. Even more startling. Listen. Listen. Listen to the word of Allah. And then go back home and look up all the tafsir that you have. Look at all the translations that you have in Malay, in whatever language, and see whether you get this. Because no one could understand it. No one could have understood this verse of the Quran until the modern age came. Allah speaks in the Quran and He says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا O you who have faith in Allah لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء Do not take Jews and Christians as your friends and allies Oh oh We got a problem now We got a problem now because we have Christian friends, eh? Don't tell me you don't have Christian friends. I have Christian friends. Oh yes. I have Hindu friends. Yeah. I have <laughs> Jewish friends as well. So I'm in plenty of trouble now, eh? Because Allah says, do not take Jews and Christians as your friends and allies. La. تَتَّخِذُ الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَ أَوْلِيَاءَ Question Is Allah speaking about all Christians and all Jews? Or is He speaking about some Christians and some Jews? That's the question. The answer is located in the words which follow. But we could never read that answer until this age. What follows is, which means, now listen carefully, particularly if you are a government in the Muslim world today, the Lord in the heavens above is giving a command. Do not take such Christians and such Jews as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies to each other. In other words, the Qur'an was anticipating a moment which will come in history when Christians and Jews are going to patch up and become friends and allies. No, 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 tabure. This is not possible. Because the Christians say that the Jews committed the ultimate crime of all. They killed God. Huh? If you kill God himself, how can we ever be friends with you? Called deicide, to kill God. Hmm? So Christians always hated the Jews and persecuted them. And Jews hated the Christians. These are the Banu Israel who were deviant, accepted a false messiah. They said he is no messiah, he is a bastard. So they were hostile to each other, Christians and Jews, always hostile to each other. But in this verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that there will come a time when some Christians and some Jews are going to become friends and allies of each other. 
when that happens, then I prohibit you from being friends and allies of such people. You are prohibited. وَمَن يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Now this is terrible. 